World Cup downhill racing, definitely not for the faint-hearted. I was doing it for a long time, and I still remember the feeling, winning, standing on top of the podium. I remember all the hard work I put in there, but when it all came together, it was such a big payoff. I've been out of the World Cup game for a long time now, but this new crop of riders are playing it really well. So that's what these guys do, week in, week out, all summer long. But what do they get up to when there aren't any races to go to? No podiums to stand on? Well, that's a little different for everyone. Why don't we go find out what happens between the races? Hey! Now for the lucky few. Off-season doesn't mean rain and cold like it usually does for me. They get to chase summer all year round. So let's pop down under. Australia is a fairly big place, but it's no coincidence that two of the country's fastest crop of young racers grew up down the road from each other. Both totally different styles. Connor is raging, flat out, flat pedals, corners like a beast. Troy, on the other hand, is way more serious, more result focused, but at the end of the day, he's so consistent. He's not been outside the top five in the last three years. Adelaide, it's kind of like a, a small city. Um, got like nice kind of hills around it and a really, really good beach. Pretty hot in the summer, pretty rainy in winter, but luckily I don't get to see much of the rain because I'm overseas racing, but uh, no, it's awesome. I love it, it's got beaches, hills for riding on, what more could you want? If there's more than two or three weeks break, I'll come home, but if it's less than that, I won't really be bothered, like dealing with the jet lag flying from the other side of the world, but usually come home once or twice during the season. We don't have insane downhill tracks to ride. I guess we've got enough to produce a couple World Cup, World Cup riders at the moment. downhill tracks at Fox Creek, which is uh, about half an hour out of the city. And I've been riding there for since I started mountain biking, so when I was like 10, went there for the first time. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. More tracks are going in every year, and the hill is not massive, but it's got enough terrain to like have some pretty sweet downhill tracks. I have a little bit of a routine, like I go to the gym routinely uh, a few times a week and then got my friend Ben training me and he's been training me for the last couple of years so I just go down to the local footy club gym where he, he works out of and hit it out for a few hours a week and yeah it's just, it doesn't really feel like I'm working that hard there because you're kind of like chilling with your mate and laughing around or whatever but we are, we're training hard there for sure. We're in Kangarilla Forest, South Adelaide, it's pretty much the only pine forest you can ride in. 
anywhere around here. Yeah. Fun steep tracks, which is pretty rare in Adelaide. I just love riding my bike, and that's kind of what I enjoy going to the races. Like, if I didn't enjoy it, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it. Like, I'm not doing it to just get results or like get money or whatever. This is what I want to do. So, I don't know. Just kind of take a like a more fun aspect to it, and just ride fast, really. I'd probably get up uh, behind my house maybe once a week and ride. Like, it's so easy and so convenient. If I'm bored at home, then I'll just go, all right, I'm just going to go for a quick hour and just go for an hour on dirt and ride. And it's super easy to pedal up, and, and you've got, like, three to four tracks to choose from on the way down. So, like, brings me back to when I was, like, way younger and starting out and downhilling. Yeah, I mean, there's probably too many things to fit into one day, but got like road riding, for instance, as dad has raced, you know, rode his whole life. So it's pretty fun just to, to go out and enjoy that. So yeah, good day, sun's out, not too much wind. Just those bloody hills that might cause a few dramas. Oh God, I don't have the legs for that. I'm fucking cool. There's always a bit of like BMX thrown in there. That's where I grew up racing. So it's kind of fun just to go back and, and keep those pretty good and enjoy like chilling out. I've got the dogs and I take them for runs every day. And when you see them happy, it makes me happy. And it's just kind of a good like reason to get outside. And <laughs> even if I'm on the e-bike, they're still pulling me along. So it's good. I don't think anything we did was wrong this year. We just, uh, you know, had a, had a really good chance to maybe take a win or two, but just we're a little bit off of it. So I know one day, like, we'll, we'll go out and almost win every World Cup. So I'm just kind of uh, putting all the hard work in and I'll wait till that happens and hopefully it does. I, I always feel like you're not learning um, unless you're actually racing. Yeah, my, my history with the Canadian race has been really good. I've, uh, I've won it the last four times, uh, four years in a row, which has been sweet. And for me, it's a, a track that I really enjoy riding and have fun with. And I guess it, it's another race, but it's also like a fun race. So you don't have the pressure of a World Cup. You can kind of chill and, and go do laps on, on a jump line and then just go to your race run straight away. So it's pretty, uh, pretty nice and easy and, and fun. Yeah, I guess uh, right from the start, it's been um, like Luik, Danny, and a, a bit of Amri. Like the first two World Cups, all four of us were, were on the podium each time, I'm pretty sure. So this year, everyone seemed to like step it up. Like I felt like I stepped it up like immensely from last year, but then so did they as well. Like Danny getting second at the, the first World Cup, you know, I was getting third, but we were point two or something off of each other, like maybe not even that, like maybe a, a lot less than that. So the times were real tight this year and it kind of just kept going all the way down to the wire and Danny got his first win in the season like that year. So it was a big race that turned out to be like 
probably one of the best races of the year. So they are pretty close at the races, at least in terms of time. But let's get back home to the UK and head up the road to Redcar, where you guessed it, Danny Hart lives. I remember seeing him win his first race 15 years ago, but he's come a long way since then, including plenty of World Cup wins and rainbow stripes. To be honest, I rode with Danny recently, and for me, he's one of those riders that he rides all year round, wherever, whatever the weather, wherever he is in the world, he's riding his bike. Some guys take a little bit of time off. They don't ride for a month or two because they've had a solid season. Danny carries on riding the whole time through the winter and he's, he's having fun whenever he's on his bike. So, I guess Red Car is more known for the steel and the fishing industry not far from the hills in the North Yorkshire Moors and then we've got the coast there. It's just a cool little town really. I've been here all my life so I love it but some people, we, we get a bit of a bad rap sometimes but people that clearly haven't been here. No, it's been quite difficult I guess for me as a downhill mountain biker to locally source tracks to ride and stuff like that. A couple of years ago my parents and I took over a bike park over in Hamsterley, which is somewhere I've ridden downhill since I started. That was like the first place I went. So it was really cool for that opportunity to come up and for us to take it over and put back into the sport, because the sport's given me so much and allowed me to have the life I have. So it's really cool for us to take over the bike park and that's been, that's been really good. And hopefully it's something I can go into as I finish my racing and whenever that time comes around. Who I'll, who I'll train in the gym with. And we've got Alex, who I went to school with and has been a, a long-time friend of mine, and he likes his fitness and stuff, so we can push one another in the gym, and then I'll be out on the road, on my road bike, and just try and stay around local. When it comes to, like, life at home, there's pretty much me and Sophia here in, in my house, and then... My mechanic, he lives like, he's one hour away, so if I need anything done to the bike or anything to do with work, if you like, with riding, then he's always there to help. And my parents are just around the corner also, so it works well. My coach, Phil, came and watched me ride motocross a few weeks ago, and he, and he saw how physical it was and how demanding on the body it was, so incorporated that into my training, yeah, but I'll do my best to be out every Wednesday and one day on a weekend, hopefully. But it, I really enjoy it, so it's like training, but it's really good fun to me.
Um, for 2020, I hope I have a, a good winter's training, a good off-season. I've come off at the end of a good season in 2019, so that's going to give a fuel, for, fuel in my belly for, for training and working really hard, because I know how hard everybody else is working as well. You should be fit enough to be able to to go like hell from start to finish. And, and when I watch Amory especially, I can see that's what he's doing. And, and I'm going to have to take from that and really work hard this winter. I'd love to put a, a British rider back on the top. Now from one hard worker to another, but this time over the pond on Vancouver Island. Quiet, nice guy, Mark Wallace. While he may be polite and softly spoken, his riding is shouting a different story. definitely has the, the skills and also the work ethic to, to go out there, train himself up, do what it takes to be the fastest guy in the world. We are in Duncan, British Columbia, on Vancouver Island. So I've lived here, Maple Bay, in this house actually for my whole life. Yeah, I, uh, I always look forward to coming home after races. It's, it's a place that I grew up and you know, all, all my friends and family are here. So I feel like when I come home, I just come home to like a, almost a second team, like between my parents and friends and, and my trainer, Clay, like it's, uh, it's amazing. Like it's gonna be people that are, you know, supporting my racing and, and wanna be involved and are happy to be involved. So that's, I feel really lucky and it's always, always been very, very helpful to me. And I owe it a lot to, so the trail riding you can actually access from the backyard. Like, I don't need to go on the on the roads to get there. There's uh, two mountains on either side of it, both with good trail riding. So we're in a pretty ideal place to ride bikes. Yeah, I think just having riding around has made it really, really easy for me to just ride lots. And once racing kind of came into my my focus, I just shifted the focus to racing a little bit and. I feel super lucky. I can just, you know, come out the door, go through the gate into the backyard, and, and I'm on the trails. You can access the whole mountain from there, so super lucky. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the local downhill spot, and uh, here anywhere from like one to three, maybe four days a week. The tracks are fast, and they're reasonably steep and kind of tight. Yeah, you're just spending a lot of time going really fast, really close to trees. It's a lot of fun. <laughs>
Last season, it was pretty good actually. I, I ended up with eighth overall, which I'm super happy about. I had a goal to be in the top 10, so that's good. But the way I got there wasn't exactly how I'd hoped. Um, I kind of got there just by being very, very consistent. Like, I didn't really have one great weekend. I just was kind of like, okay, every weekend. So, gonna try and keep the consistency and just bump up the, bump up the top speed a little bit. Twenty twenty, uh, ideally like top five overall. I think, I think if I can keep the consistency I had last year and and ride as fast as I should be able to, then I think it can be done. So, I'm gonna aim high and try and make it happen. Proving proving myself right or other people wrong is like pretty motivating. <laughs> Coming from Vancouver Island with the massive hills and the trails on the doorstep, back to the UK. Surrey Hills, not quite the same as Vancouver Island, but there's one guy that's doing pretty good coming from the Surrey Hills, Brendan Fairclough. Brendog is definitely one of those guys that could probably leave his downhill bike for a couple of months, jump back on it and, uh, and still be good on it. But I think when he's not riding the downhill bike, he's probably stuck in a bog in mid Wales somewhere. It's a good like indication here of how you're riding in the day. Yeah. So, so this is Adam Eager. It's too wet to ride bikes, we come up here, but we end up uh, up here probably once a week. I just think it's such good training, your heart rate's up full pelt, like you're wiggling in between trees at like 30, 40 miles an hour, getting stuck, it's such a fun vibe. Already we've been like helping each other out of bog, I reckon that's good training. I just revving it till it blew up. <laughs> so angry. Someone that's never been here, I'd say real bad weather, rubbish tracks, horrible food. Uh, don't bother coming in. See, one morning I became different. No warning, I was on with no plane ticket. So strong, I could throw my hands like the game with a pitch. A plate chicken with a train with I've travelled around the world the last 10 years. I've seen some amazing places and, and seen some cool stuff, but home's home. I definitely, I think we we do all right, yeah. Pretty pretty happy with that where we live. Drug sellers to the outside, keep another young mind away from. Take the medicine away from the housewives and give the pain pills back to the pain stricken. I rebuild the city soon as a quake hit it. The word free racer, yeah, it's 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 a funny one. It's sort of been been stapled on my back over the years, which I no, I don't actually really care. Still, uh, my main goal is racing. That's what gets me up in the morning, that's what gets me to the gym, that's what keeps me motivated. Doing Rampage every year doesn't help my uh, free racer nickname. Do you know what? I, I don't think of myself as that. I just think of myself as loving riding my bike, whether it's down a hill, down a little lonely bank on my trail bike, or over huge jumps. Yeah, I've actually been heading to South Africa pretty much every winter for the last five or six years. Good friend of mine as well, Andrew Neathling, lives there. So it's a good little spot to, when, when it's snowing and rainy in the UK, head over there for two, three weeks training, get on the downhill bike early season. Told the power corrupts, so what you gonna be when your hour is 
Dark Fest is a good friend of mine, uh, Sam Reynolds and uh, Ryan Franklin's little baby. Oversized jump line they've built in, uh, in South Africa. Super excited to go there every year and jump in huge jumps. So 2019 is a pretty hectic year. Pretty, pretty proud achievements for me. You know, sixth at the World Cup, fifth at Hardline, got married, fourth at Rampage. Really pushed big, big web series called The Dog's Life and pushed them super hard. I'm really proud of that. Jeez, it's been action packed and uh, I'm really stoked at how it's been and I just want to keep the ball rolling into 2020. So from one free racer to another, we got a young kid from South Africa, loves to be having fun on his bike, not sure whether he's a racer or a free rider, jumper. But I guess when you come from a place like Cape Town, there's so much more going on than just training for downhill. My name's Theo Langson. I'm 24 years old, even though I feel about 17 years old, and I'm uh, from Cape Town, South Africa. I think I was riding a bicycle without ferry wheels at two and a half years old. And then by about three years old, my dad put uh, fairy wheels on a PW50, and then I was riding that up and down the road. And then about like four or five, I just started doing like uh, PW50 motocross races. Obviously you can't ride a motocross bike near you know, when you're residential area. So I was always just riding bicycles in the road with my neighbors and my older brother. Literally never stopped riding bikes. I tried a lot of sports like rugby and hockey and cricket and all of that stuff. It always just becomes so repetitive and like training just becomes a chore because you just go to the same place every do and do the same thing every day. Whereas bikes, you can ride all over the world a new track which brings you as much enjoyment as the next. Like training is just a pleasure because it's literally the most fun thing ever. You just ride up the hill and then you get to enjoy going down the hill. Newly freshed uh, basement where the older mom, where my mom kicks the little kid who's still staying home, and I didn't really sort out cupboards and stuff yet. I have all my stuff is just on the pool table, and I don't have a place to park my one to five, so I just sleep next to it. This is a magazine article they asked me, but they didn't know how much of a reprobate I was, and just how good Greg Minai is. <laughs> As far as the most admirable World Cup riders go, I'd have to start with Greg Minar. He is just like, like, not many people understand how much of a legend he is. Like he's literally, he should be in a retirement home and he's still kicking these 17 year old French kids asses. I can't call up a whole bunch of mates and go for rides because usually all of them are at work. Like there's only two other guys I know who are in Stellenbosch who are trying to ride professionally, which is Ike and Nico Velasco. Ike is actually, I met him years ago when he was about very big. And uh, he's basically just, uh, ex-motocross kid who got into mountain bikes has obviously displayed an like, insane amount of talent. So between the races, it's obviously, I'm not from like Europe or the UK where I can just pop back home. I like, to me, to fly back to South Africa is a huge spiel, so I just go straight and spend the three months there. If I ever have gaps between the races, I'll just go to like Morzine. And then when I come back to South Africa, it goes straight into South African summer. There's a whole bunch of huge parties with all my friends. I can take a bit of a off season and uh, yeah, go, go live the Cape Town dream. Yeah, 
Dog Fest is like the best thing to ever happen in my life. I mean, I, I literally can't tell you, I used to watch Fest series videos and be like, oh my God, that looks so, so cool. Now I'm just involved and now it's so huge every year and every year I'm so scared. And every year I'm too deep in it that I can't, I can't back out now. Focus on one thing, you can't, you can't do it all, like focus on racing or focus on free ride, you can't do, well, I don't really agree with them. I think if I could just ride my bike and have as much fun as possible, I think people will understand that. Like I don't even race enduro, but I've made qualifications. So this year I'm gonna do some enduro world series as well, just because like, why not? If I've got an open weekend, I'm not gonna just go sit on the couch. I'd rather go kind of just have fun, test my abilities. I think this year the goal would maybe be to become the world's, well, the mountain bike world's first triathlete and do enduro, downhill racing, and fest series all in one year. I think that'd be quite cool. So from one rookie to another fast young rider, but this one already has a bunch of top World Cup results under his belt. Let's head to Nice in the south of France and catch up with Loris Vergier. Hello, I'm Loris Vergier, I'm 24. We are currently in south of France, where I grew up. So we are in Cancermer, 10 kilometers from Nice. Tiny region with a lot of stuff, so sea and mountains. In between the race, we come back and we want to reset, have a, a good time for us. Just like having our mind off racing. You just want to go like see the beach, have uh, some fun, but you obviously have to train. So yeah, downhill. We have to go back at it and have fun on the downhill bike, so. Between the races, you're often like burned out from riding downhill, racing. So I obviously just do whatever I want for a bit. We have a pretty big region and my focus was downhill, but I always regret like not exploring much. I feel it's a great way to see like landscape and yeah, discover the region a bit more. So basically when I have like a, a week of training, I have a gym session in the morning and late at night I go at the BMX track just to have fun and it's in my training like program but I go an hour and have fun and just hang out and do jumps and try to do wheelies and then the second time I go and I have like the hardest thing you, you could do on the BMX track like four laps straight and you're like In the region, we have like close to the sea, like 
three or four like tracks. If you want to ride more like normal dirt, berm, more like alpine, you can drive like an hour and be like in three different areas and have a chairlift. So it's quite easy and convenient during like summer to ride downhill here. Racing is amazing because it's never finished. It's always changing and it's never the same. Like you could be good one year and be like really slow the next year. And I feel like it's in constant like movement and that makes it feel like you can't stop. Just because it's always moving and evolving and you're like, oh yeah, okay, so we go again and blah, blah, blah. So obviously now the goal is to go faster than last year and trying to do as good as I can be and as fast as I can go. So that would be winning some races and be, yeah, in the top three more often. Okay, let's jump back over the pond. USA, North Carolina to be more specific. My teammate, Luca Shaw, he's still young. He's got a big head on his shoulders and Last year was a tough season for him, came into it with, a, with an injury, uh, missed the first race and was playing catch-up all year. I know for a fact he's had a way better off-season this year. He's come back strong, he's looking really good on his bike and uh, we've got plenty more to come out of Luca Shaw. So I live, I live in Pisgah Forest, North Carolina. It's about 10 minutes outside of Brevard, North Carolina, another super small town. It's a pretty quiet place, no big city, that's for sure, um, but uh, really good for riding and pretty much any outdoor kind of thing. Growing up around here, I was always like excited to leave when I was living, going to school here as a kid. And the more I travel, the more I love home. So it's, uh, it's, it's good. When I'm home, I like to do my training, have fun on the bike, ride every day, and just spend time with my family and my brother and my friends. So yeah, living the dream now, I love it. The Riveter, uh, new spot to ride. Big bro works here, so. Indoor, indoor jumps. Yeah, just checking it out. We, we live together and he's, he's one year older than me and we've ridden together my whole life. So he's like my number one sort of like training partner, I guess you could say. The riding around here is pretty diverse and it's got a bit of everything. So we get four seasons a year and different terrain and different conditions year round. So for sure, try and have all my bases covered. If you want to achieve the best results you can, like you have to, you know, put every, all the work in and I don't feel like there's anything I can't do to prepare being home. We are about an hour away from my house at Bailey Mountain. Um, yeah, local downhill spot. So yeah, it's good to get on the bike and not have to drive too far. Bottom, 2019 was 
My toughest year yet, I'd say. Um, started off with uh, injury. It's kind of if I can sort of combine my last two years and take the good from both of them, that would be great. I think in 2018, I really had the speed to win, like all year. I felt like I was a lot of times the fastest guy. In 2019, I was super consistent. So if I can combine those two, I'd be really happy. Yeah, for sure, I want to be on the podium and I want to be fighting for wins. So from the smooth, consistent Luca Shaw, we're now jumping to a wild man, Omri Piron from France. He definitely looks solid on the bike. He's one of the new crop that is buff in the gym, he's strong, he muscles his bike down that hill and definitely takes a lot of chances. My name is Amory Piron. Uh, I live in Brioude, like in the middle of France. There's no big mountains. The biggest track we are is now two minutes and 20 seconds. It's enough to, to have fun and enjoy with friends. Just the home spot, like 200 meters from a from house. We build it uh, to enjoy moments with friends or with a brother. We don't really want the problems, we wrap the bass line. We can go block for block, go one on one. In the middle of the street, these fists stay packed. He haters get shook with uppercuts. My brother ride mountain bikes before me, so you know you want when you're a kid you want to do like your, your big brother. I tried to, to not follow him too to young. I was like, no, I don't want to do like you. So I tried a lot of stuff and then finally I saw that mountain bikes was just the best way to, to enjoy sports. The whole family is riding bikes and motors, so we are on the same same vibes, you know? My mother has a big garden, so we can eat good vegetables. And my father likes to be here and work on the bikes and the motorbikes. When I don't ride bikes, the best thing ever is moto. <laughs> Just like downhill bikes, the same feeling that you can ride like two hours non stopping. Typically, I train twice a day. I have a program that uh, I do what I want in between the training. I just enjoy and chill. When I have a long ride to do on the road or road bike, if I have one hour and a half, it's okay, but if, if I see two hours to do, Mm. <laughs> I prefer short. I did just an insane result on the overall. I want to win again to, to prove that, you know, it was not a fluke. Just want to have a great fight, a fair fight with everybody. There is a way of life you have. Enjoy time with friends, eat what you want. Just be you and it's enough to, to still enjoy the life. Huh? and we ride bikes.
it's difficult to, to find that, that balance, you know? For me, I have the balance, so it's not easy, but I, I still like it. So that's what the world's fastest get up to between the races. There's no right or wrong way to prepare themselves for a World Cup season. They jump on all kinds of bikes, they have fun doing all kinds of other things. But when it comes down to it, they're preparing for those races. The World Cup season kicks off pretty soon. For them lot, obviously not me.